Okay, can you see my screen? Yep. Okay, so um, today I'm going to be presenting on I'm going to be presented on antibacterials. Um, so there's different ways you can classify bacteria. So um, we can classify based on shape or based on whether they're gram positive or gram negative, or based on the action of the bacteria, whether they're bacteriostatic or bactericidal. So there are generally three shapes of bacteria. We have the spherical ones. Um, so some examples are Streptococcus pneumoniae. This is the one that causes pneumonia. Um, Streptococcus pyogenes that causes strep throat. Um, Micrococcus luteus, which causes body odor, and Staphylococcus aureus, which can cause sinus infections and food poisoning. Um, some of the examples of rod-shaped bacteria are Bacillus anthracis, which causes anthrax, Salmonella enterica, which causes typhoid, and Clostridium botulinum, which causes botulism. And then the final category is spiral shape. Um, some examples are Vibrio cholera, which causes cholera, uh, Helicobacter pylori, which causes stomach ulcers, and Treptonomia pallidum, which causes syphilis. Um, the other way we can classify um, bacteria is either whether they're gram positive or gram negative. So gram positive bacteria, they have a thick peptidoglycan layer and an inner cytoplasmic membrane, whereas um, gram negative bacteria, they have an outer membrane and a thin peptidoglycan layer and then an inner membrane. Um, because there's two membranes for for gram negative bacteria, it's usually harder to to design antibiotics for these since they need to penetrate the outer membrane first in order to exert their effects. Um, gram positive usually stain blue or purplish, and gram gram negative usually stains red. Um, and the final way we can classify bacteria is uh, bactericidal or bacteriostatic. So bactericidal, anti bactericidal antibiotics, um, they kill bacteria. The action is uh, irreversible and disrupts the cell wall or structure, structure or formation. Um, and in this case, the immune system, when you treat um, bacteria with uh, bactericidal antibiotics, the immune system is unaffected because the, these antibiotics will kill the bacteria and uh, they go away on their own. Uh, low doses of uh, bacteriostatic, bacteriostatal antibiotics can also have a bacteriostatic effect. Um, bacteriostatic antibiotics, they inhibit the growth of bacteria um, the action is reversible um, because, I, as you can see in the petri dish, once you uh, apply the antibiotic, the the bacteria stop growing; they don't go away. So it depends on the immune system to eliminate the infection and kill the cells. It usually does this by inhibiting DNA replication or protein synthesis, and low doses of these antibiotics can be ineffective. So uh, I'm going to focus on antibiotic resistance today. Um, there are multiple different ways that um, bacteria can become resistant to antibiotics. So they can decrease the influx of the antibiotics. They can decrease. They can increase efflux of the antibiotic. Um, they can cause target modification. Um, they can inactivate the antibiotic by either degrading it or um, by chemical modification. Um, we also have target protection where um, uh, another protein protects the target from the antibiotic. And then finally, we have a target bypass where um, the, there can, the bacteria can make new proteins to, pro to produce the same function as a target protein. So um, target bypass is a strategy that consists of producing an alternate pathway that bypasses the antibiotic by making the original target redundant. 
So um, there's different ways uh, the bacteria can do this. So um, it can create an alternate enzyme that the, bac the antibiotic cannot bind to, so it has no effect. Um, it can also create an alternative target, which I'll show an example of soon. And it can cause an overproduction of the target so that it's too much for the, the antibiotic to have a, an effective effect. So this is an example of vancomycin. So vancom vancomycin, um, so in a normal bacteria, um, we have these like NAM, NAG pentapeptides, and they are cross-linked to form the peptidoglycan layer in gram-positive bacteria. Um, vancomycin works by binding to these pentapeptides, and so they cannot be used to cross-link to each other and form the peptidoglycan layer. So this layer ruptures and the bacteria dies. So an example of resistance to this drug would be um, there's an expression of a van A gene cluster, and this leads to the abnormal um, synthesis of these pentapeptides. So as you can see in like the first image, it the vancomycin fits to this uh, pentapeptide, but in the second image below, um, they have different structures, different shapes, and it's unable to, the vancomycin can't bind to it any longer, but these can still be used to um, synthesize the cell wall. So this is an example of target bypass and antibiotic resistance. Um, next, we have target site modification. Um, this can be done through enzyme enzymatic alteration of the binding site. So you can like add a methyl group or um, like the bypass that I just showed just before, or there can be a mutation in the genes encoding the target site. Um, and all of these can change the site where the antibiotic binds, even just by adding a methyl group, um, the antibiotic wouldn't be able to bind any longer. So in this case, it's not able to bind to the ribosome, so protein synthesis would continue without, without the um, antibiotic being able to work. And then we have target protection. Um, there's a couple ways the bacteria can do this. Um, for, so first of all, it can bind to the drug target and sterically remove the drug from the target, or it can bind to the drug target uh, somewhere else and allosterically cause the dissociation from of the drug from the, the target. And it can also bind and cause changes so that even with the drug bound to the target, the, the protein can still function. Um, so aside from modifying the targets, you can also, um, the bacteria also modifies or inactivates the drugs. Um, and you can do that through like hydrolysis to break down the, the drug so it's no longer effective. An example of this would be um, beta lactamases breaking down beta lactam antibiotics. It can also modify the drugs by adding an acetyl group or a methyl group or a phosphate group. And since they're modified, they're not able to bind to their targets anymore. And um, so we can also, the bacteria can also cause an increased efflux of the drug. Um, as you can see in the Im image, um, a mutation, in the efflux pumps can cause an overexpression. So you have way more on the cell membrane and they're all pumping the drug out of the, the bacteria cell. And for gram-negative bacteria, it's already difficult to cross the outer membrane. So even having an upregulation of these efflux pumps make it really hard to find anti to have antibiotics that are effective in treating gram negative bacteria. Um, another way is to decrease the influx of the drug so to prevent the drug from getting to the target in the first place. Um, and drugs usually get through the bacteria in these 
proteins called porins. Um, so we can have like a mutation where the, there's loss of a particular type of porin. So there's less of those porins on the cell membrane. So there's, there's less chance of the drug getting into the, the bacteria cell. Or they can have a mutation with that causes narrowing of the channel. So the drug can no longer fit into those porins to get through. Or you can have a decreased expression of these protein of these porins on the cell membranes. So the less they are, the less drugs I'll be able to get into the bacteria. And usually the drugs do need to cross the cell membrane because they a lot of drugs exert their effects uh, in the periplasmic space. So without getting past this membrane, they're virtually ineffective. Um, and these are some strategies I came across while reading to that they're proposing to use to combat antibiotic resistance. So um, we can in we can target like the, the gram negative outer membrane to make it more permeable to increase drop uptake into gram negative bacteria. This is not really a problem with gram positive as they per, per, like they penetrate the peptidoglycan easier or they usually have their effect on the peptidoglycan layer itself. Um, you can also inhibit the efflux pump activity. So those are the ones that pump the drug out of the cell. So if we inhibit it, then the drugs would remain in the bacteria longer. And also inhibit, inhibiting antibiotic degrading enzymes. So like the beta lactamases, there are drugs that inhibit the beta, the beta lactamases in bacteria, but even some of these bacteria are becoming resistant to those drugs. Okay, and that's it for me. Great, thanks very much, Christina. Um, nicely done. Thanks.